Hello everyone, it's so good to be back. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done a video, as many of you know. Um, I've been tucked away working really hard getting my website ready. So it's, it's up now, elliseveryday.com. You can go and check it out. Uh, there's lots of resources for soap makers and sourdough bread makers there. So that's why I've been away for a little while. And what I'm making today is laundry soap or like a general cleaning soap. Um, some of you are probably familiar with my video, how to make your own laundry powder, like with a handmade soap base. Well, this is a soap recipe that you can use to make that laundry powder with. So I posted about this recipe on social media yesterday and you probably, um, if you saw it, you would have seen a photo of this mold. This is the um, timber slab mold that I'm going to be using to make this soap. It's one that my dad made me. He made me four of these years ago now when I was making a lot more soap than I am these days. I'm going to be making it with that. So I'm going to make quite a big batch of soap. Most people, including me a lot of the time, make laundry soap with 100% coconut oil. Coconut oil is a really high cleansing soap once it's made into soap. But this recipe, if you saw that, you'll see that I'm using 50% coconut oil, but also 50% rice bran oil. And you're probably wondering why rice bran oil? Well, the question really is why only 50% coconut oil for this recipe? You can use a lot of coconut oil to make a really high cleansing, cleaning soap, but it's actually not necessary. Anywhere from about 50% upwards is going to make a really highly cleansing soap. And if you put this recipe into a soap calculator and you look at the range and the, the values that come out, uh, it will tell you that this is a really high cleansing soap, even with only 50% coconut oil. Uh, one of the benefits of adding another oil in with the coconut oil is that uh, it makes it a bit more gentle. So if you are using it for a cleaning soap, um, you know, you're washing your dishes or you're hand washing clothes a lot of the time. Uh, if you're using a 100% coconut oil soap for hand washing clothes and you're using a low super fat soap, it could be quite harsh on the skin. So if you use another oil that's a bit more of a gentle oil, and with the coconut oil, you're going to get a slightly milder soap, but it's still going to be have really high cleansing values, but it won't be so stripping of the oils if you, you know, want to use your hands with it. So that's one reason. Um, the other reason is that, and this is the rice bran oil that I'm going to use in this recipe, I just had to use this up. <laughs> so, you know, um, there's nothing really super duper special about rice bran oil apart from the fact that it's quite affordable in a lot of places and there are definitely lots of places including Australia where rice bran oil is a lot more affordable than olive oil. It has similar qualities to olive oil so it doesn't uh, make a very high lathering soap. It's obviously it's a soft liquid oil at room temperature so it's an unsaturated oil um, but rice bran oil is high in vitamin E and other antioxidants, so it keeps pretty well. Um, it does accelerate the trace a little bit in soaps sometimes. I have used it and have noticed that the soap trace is a bit faster. Um, but really, it's a, it's a good, uh, in lots of places, not everywhere, but lots of places, it's a nice um, affordable oil to use for soap making and you can replace some of the olive oil in some recipes with rice bran oil. Another question that came up after I showed my little notebook recipe of what I'm doing was um, why am I using 3% super fat in this recipe? Because most people when they're making laundry soap, they use a very low super fat amount, like zero super fat usually. My understanding of super fatting soap has developed and I've got much greater appreciation now for the variation of saponification values for oils and all of the um, varietal and seasonal and regional variations in the actual oils that we're using and that the saponification values in soap calculators, they're averages. So they're not always a perfect match for every um, soap that we're going to have. 
Um, I'm only using a 3% super fat in this, but it just does give that safety buffer just in case the soap calculator that I used for this recipe, which was soap calc, by the way, um, just in case its sap values for rice bran oil are way off or they're not very accurate for my rice bran oil, it gives, gives me a little bit of an extra buffer. So I think I'm pretty ready to get started. Sorry if I've waffled on a bit too much. I've got my coconut oil here. It's getting cold here now, it's winter, so I've just put my coconut oil out of my big drum into my little saucepan. I'm not gonna make the soap with this. This is just one of our cooking saucepans. I'm gonna melt it down and um, then I'm gonna mix that in with the, just the room temperature rice bran oil and I'm gonna make it all in this big bucket here and we'll make the soap, it's gonna be pretty easy. So first step is just to get this coconut oil melting. I'm just gonna put it on low heat. Um, I don't want high heat at all, I just wanna melt it. To line my mold, I'm just gonna use this um, non-stick baking paper. This is leftover from when I used to make big batches of soap. Um, it's um, really good stuff. It's just Glad Bake, which is an Australian brand. If anybody's in Australia, they'll know what I mean. Um, I'm going to use the same method that I show in my video, how to line a soap mold liner. So there's my mold lined. That You won't get any leaks with that at all because none of that's cut. That's just folded out of one piece of non-stick baking paper. The coconut oil is starting to melt quite well. Um, if you're in summer where you are, you probably won't have to do this because your coconut oil will probably already be melted. Next I'm going to make my lye solution. So I've got my gloves on, I've got my goggles which are going over the top of my glasses which is really important. You need to protect your eyes completely at all times when you're handling lye. So I'll be leaving these goggles on now for the rest of this process. So I've got sodium hydroxide here. This is just from Bunnings. So I need 383 grams of sodium hydroxide for this recipe. So I'm just going to pour that into this container. It looks like quite a lot because it's a big batch of soap. Nearly 240 out of that. Now I just need to make up the last little bit to get 383. Here we go, perfect. Put the lid on that straight away because I just want to have that ready to go. Then I'm going to get my water ready for the lye solution and I'm going to use half ice. So how much water do I need? Uh, 767 grams. So I'm going to use maybe about Roughly about 400 grams of ice. For those of you who don't know why I'm using ice, if you use half ice and half regular water for your lye solution, the coldness of the ice and using cold water, it keeps the fumes right down. You barely get any fumes off the sodium hydroxide when you put it into the water solution. So I'm just going to add rainwater. This is just from our rainwater tank and this is rainwater as well. So I'm going to top this up now to make 767 grams all up. So we've got a really cold water solution there. Now I'm going to add this sodium hydroxide. Again, you always, always put the sodium hydroxide into the water and never the other way around. That's really important. And I'm just gonna add this in slowly and stir it around. That's really cold. I can feel it warming up down the bottom. There we go, that's actually fairly warm now, but it's a lot cooler than it would have been if I had have just used water. 
I'm just going to set that aside somewhere safe until I'm ready to mix the soap. I'm going to be putting some eucalyptus essential oil in my soap. You don't have to put any fragrance at all in your laundry soap. I just really love eucalyptus. Yum, smells so good. 100 mils of the essential oil. Don't forget, I'm making a great big slab batch of soap here. It looks like a lot and it is, uh, but it's going to go a long way. And the last thing I need to do is get my rice bran oil ready. So I'm going to weigh it out into this smaller bucket because my big bucket doesn't fit on the scale. So we need 1,250 grams of rice bran oil. Here we go. Okie dokie. I'm ready to make the soap now. I've got my 1,250 grams of rice bran oil and my 1,250 grams of coconut oil that's melted. It's around about 40 degrees. This is just room temperature. It's quite cool actually. Um, but the lye solution is a bit warm, so it's all right. I'm going to put my two oils into my giant big bucket. I hope you can all see what I'm doing here. It's a fairly straightforward <laughs> soap recipe. If you've made soap before, this won't be anything too exciting. Except maybe pouring it into the mold because it's a nice big mold. Now for the coconut oil. In it goes. Again, make sure you get it all out. Mix those two together a bit. Gonna mix in the lye solution now. Blend it. Probably won't take much blending. It'll, it'll set up fairly quickly. I'm just gonna strain this lye mixture in. Um, I didn't realize, but this jug, I haven't used it for a while. I had a little bit of dust in the bottom. So I'm just gonna strain that through there. This is all of the lye solution going in at once. There we go. Put that somewhere safe. Give that a mix. All right, here we go. So you're looking for that colour change and thickening. I can feel that thickening already. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly put my essential oil in. Whoa, it's thickening up already. Wow. <laughs> oh, the joys of soap making. So that's um, become a thick trace really fast. That's rice bran oil for you. So beware people, it does do that. This is why preparation is so important. Because I have everything ready, I can just pour this straight into the mold. And because it's laundry soap, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a bit chunky and lumpy. That's not going to hurt it. I hope you can see. It's looking pretty good. Looks like custard. It's going to become chunky custard pretty soon if I don't get this in the mold. Here we go. This is the adventure that is soap making. If I had used olive oil in that, I don't think it would have thickened up quite that fast. But that's all right. Oh, it looks good. It's going to be nice. Chunky. Probably have a few air pockets in it. But again, it doesn't matter because I'm going to grate it up. And... Um, 
make laundry powder out of it or put some bars in my laundry for hand washing and um, you know spot cleaning stains and things like that so there it is that's the soap done so you know how I just said oh that's the rice bran oil that made that fast actually it's probably more the coconut oil 50% coconut oil soap um, will set up really fast. If I had have made this with 100% coconut oil, it would have done the same thing, or it might have been even faster. I'm going to put the lid on this because I do want it to stay warm and I want it to go through a full gel phase, which it will. Um, coconut oil soap will saponify very, very fast. So this is gonna get quite warm, especially given that it's in a big slab mold. So. I am just going to cover it up for a little bit, but I'll come back and check it. Well, it's been about half an hour since I made the soap and I have to show you this. Check that out. This is a really great example of what it looks like when your soap is gelling. See how the sides are still opaque, but the center, it's, it's kind of a bit translucent and jelly and it's quite soft. So this soap, as I said before, it saponifies very quickly. It is going through a full gel phase. You can feel the heat coming off that. The soap making reaction is an exothermic reaction, so it generates heat. I just wanted to show you how nice that looks. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the lid on, cover it up again with my little tea towel, because I want that gel to go all the way to the edges. But this is lovely, I'm happy with that. It looks great. Well, here we are, it's late in the evening. Well, it's about nine o'clock. Um, I'm just going to cut this soap now because uh, it's getting quite hard. I was gonna leave it till the morning. It still looks a little bit translucent inside, but um, it's very firm. And the longer you leave it, any soap like this that's made with a lot of coconut oil, um, the longer you leave them, the harder they get. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to try and cut it up. I'm just eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be hard to cut. Uh, I have done this before, not for a really long time though. So if you've got a big knife like this, like a big chef's knife, um, that's probably your best option if you've got really hard slabs of soap. There we go, we've got three logs of soap. Beautiful, fresh. Laundry soap. I'm going to cut these with my crinkle cutter just for the fun of it, really. And there it is, 50% coconut and 50% rice bran oil laundry soap with uh, eucalyptus essential oil. Lovely. Good morning everyone. I couldn't resist, I had to do a lather test. The soap is quite firm. Um, it's fully saponified so it's safe for me to test. I still will cure this for a couple of weeks just to dry it out a bit more before I grate it or use it, um, but it's fine to test like this. I'm just gonna um, wash out this dishcloth just to give you an idea of the lather. So it's only 50% coconut oil, but you can see it still has a really big fluffy 
abundant lather and because of the low super fat on this this will probably dry my hands a little bit but not as much as a hundred percent coconut oil soap so it's a bit of a happy compromise best of both worlds you get the cleaning power of coconut but not quite so harsh cleaning look at that it's a good lather this is how I wash my dishcloths and then I put them in on the hot wash with the towels as well but sometimes I just give them a quick little wash like that look at that lather it's very creamy and thick and abundant is the word that's it that's the soap rinses out pretty well There we have it. All done. It's great soap. Bye everyone.